Hey guys, uh, coming at you today with a T-Mobile G1 uh, that has uh, honeycomb on it. Just threw it on here and I've uh, been messing around with it. And I wanted to give you guys a shot at uh, seeing what it looks like. So you come over, it has the, the pretty, I mean, it's the honeycomb start screen. And uh, the first thing I kind of noticed, which is kind of weird, you can see right above my finger there, uh, it's got a mouse on it. I mean, that's kind of a little bit different uh, seeing that from Android. But uh, I mean, it's it's somewhat useful because of how small the screen is. But even then, I don't know if you can see this. Either either my the little ball here is off, or it's pretty broken right now. Um, the direction you roll the ball in definitely is not the direction that the cursor goes. But uh, as far as uh, the operating system itself goes. Uh, it's got a few apps uh, pre-installed on it. I mean, you've got message, messaging, uh, calculator, uh, camera, which um, I can show you does not work. Um, it's just going to come up with the black screen there. That's pretty much all you get. Um, hopefully, in future builds, they will fix that. But uh, then you've got uh, you've got a clock, which looks pretty cool. Uh, and you can set an alarm and everything. Uh, aside from that, uh, you've got some, your contacts list, uh, downloads, uh, application. Uh, you've got your M SMS mes messaging. So, uh, I mean, if you get this phone, if you put this on your G1, it's semi-usable if you're if you're not calling at all. Um, the phone part does not work yet. Uh, apparently they do have messaging work that working though. Uh, it has a messaging app. Uh, looks, as far as I could tell, it's just like uh, the one I've seen before. Uh, Quick Boot. It's just an application the developers threw in there uh, that can boot it into different uh, deals for modding. A search, a set CPU for overclocking the phone. Uh, and then it's also got a super user and a terminal. Uh, I've just got it set to pretty much the default there right now. So uh, I mean, it's it, I mean it's a G1 still, but it's been actually somewhat responsive. Uh, what you see there, kind of interesting. Uh, the developers, I guess, they threw in uh, Launcher Pro, and that's actually the one I've. I, seems a lot more usable than the default one on there for whatever reason. Uh, and here you've got all your apps. And um, it seems some extra ones. Uh, you've got the settings actually in this one, which was kind of nice because I, I wasn't able to get settings in the other one, so I found this. Um, you can do the settings. Uh, Wi-Fi does not work. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, but enabling it just gets that error message. Uh, sound does not work yet. Uh, you can adjust it all you want. You're not going to hear anything. Um, the screen, uh, my, I have brightness turned up all the way. So, I mean, uh, let's see here. In, I don't know if you saw that right there. I'm not sure what's up with those weird color flashes, but uh, it does that apparently sometimes. Um, GPS there. I haven't, I haven't seen Google Maps yet, so I'm not sure quite what's up with that or, or if I need to install those separately. Um, counts and sync. I mean, it's pretty much the same as uh, every Android device that you're going to find. Um, if you're interested, it does it again. And that, I mean, uh, you can see there Android 3.1, HTC Magic G1. And uh, it's got the kernel and the build number there. Can't really see them, but they're there. I promise. Um, let me go back here to Launcher Pro. And uh, let's see. Real quick, show you the browser. Um, there's no data services, so it, it keeps throwing up a, a force close there. Um, except it's not going to do it now. That's pretty awesome. Uh, it's of course closed on me every other time. So, you can top there. I believe that should be. Oh, it's going to bring it home. Um, definitely not what I wanted. But, 
definitely looks like a way cool browser. Um, definitely tabbed and everything. Uh, if it's going to load, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, there it goes. It's got a force close on me. But um, aside from that, I'm not sure the developers, they, they said on the forum that the keyboard was working. I have not quite gotten it to work. With that little deal there. So conveniently enough, G1 has a flat out keyboard and you can use that to type. Kind of reminds me of when I first got the G1. was no on screen keyboard. So a little bit of a flashback there, I guess. Um, we can discard that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, it no, there it flips on me. Uh, I haven't quite gotten it. Uh, figured out why it flips sometimes it doesn't. Uh, go there. Gonna do pretty colors, and then it's gonna flip around. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see if that's gonna go. Uh, no? Not gonna work? Okay. Uh, yeah, all in all, I mean, it's a, it's a very solid build. I mean, it's completely surprising that they got it to run on the G1 in the first place, so uh, anything at all would have been pretty great. Uh, not too hard to get it uh, up and working. I mean, just uh, make sure you have the right radio and SPL. Uh, flash the uh, the ROM, and you're pretty much set. It uh, did seem to take uh, a couple of flashings for me to get it to actually boot, but once it did, I mean, uh, it's actually not too bad. Uh, see here. Let's see if I get a widget. No, widget. Let's see. We go there. Get that little drawer. We hit the menu there. Let's see what we can do here. Wasn't having any any success with the default one, default uh, home screen, putting widgets on it, so let's see, there goes, yep, that one works, drag that around, got a cool little clock that apparently only wants to go there, okay, um, that's pretty much it, if you guys have any questions or uh, pretty much anything, just throw them in the comment section, and I'll uh, help you as much as I can, I'll see you next time.